Ladies and gentlemen, good evening again. Um, please continue to finish your meal. Uh, coffee service is beginning, so enjoy your coffee as I'm speaking. I want to begin the evening's main program, which, as I said before, is a tribute to the founders of the Kennan Institute, George F. Kennan, James H. Billington, and S. Frederick Starr. I want to set the stage for these tributes by saying a few words about what these three great individuals mean for the Kennan Institute today. In the early 1970s, many of the nation's best experts on Russia and the Soviet Union were wrestling with a problem. Why does U.S. policy seem so far removed from the insights of scholars in the field? Probably a familiar problem to many of you in the room today. After all, it was an objectively vital issue for U.S. national security. And since Kennan's famous exhortation in the long telegram to, quote, see that our public is educated to the realities of the Russian situation, universities across the country had taken up the challenge with vigor and even modest government support. During a conference that included giants in the fields of international and Russian studies, including Kennan himself, Cyrus Black, Zbigniew Brzezinski, Richard Pipes, Marshall Shulman, and others, Kennan proposed the establishment of a national center for advanced research on Russia in Washington, DC. And crucially, he wanted it to be independent from any government agency or university. That was, if you will, the moment of the Kennan Institute's conception. How it actually came to life was a far sight more complicated and depended on the further vision and hard work of a handful of individuals, as you'll hear tonight. Although the Cold War provided the setting for the Kennan Institute, pursuing that conflict was never its purpose. Kennan, though rightly credited with the idea for containment, should be as much appreciated for his view that diplomacy is most effective when it draws upon a deep understanding of the other. For that reason, Kennan always advocated prioritizing the study of Russian culture and history over the Kremlinology that was in vogue among his Washington contemporaries. What I think Kennan, as well as Billington and Starr, understood at that time, some 25 years into the Cold War, was that addressing the challenge of Americans getting Russia wrong was not about coming up with another all-encompassing framework like containment, for the conflict between Moscow and Washington. Indeed, getting Russia right was, and is today, about understanding today's events in the full context that has given rise to them. Yes, it's about politics and technology and economics, but it's also every bit as much about history and culture. In short, it is about what we have come to call area or regional expertise, and thankfully, the Wilson Center is a place that prizes and protects that discipline, when even many of our greatest universities have abandoned it. In fact, I'm proud to say that for two years running, the Wilson Center has been ranked by our peers as number one in the world for area studies. Our co-founders also understood the importance of people. Remember that turn of phrase, a monument for people, not pigeons? It is people who can develop the deep knowledge to inform policy debates and people who can, like Kennan himself, rise to the occasion of shaping policy, whether that's within or outside the halls of government. And they would have surely agreed we need a steady stream of new people coming into the field with new ideas, new perspective, and fresh energy. So let me turn for a moment to tell you a bit about how that understanding shapes the Kennan Institute today. We continue to support the very best research on the region, to convene policymakers and academics, to host scholars from the region, and to publish new and innovative analysis on all platforms. Over the last five years especially, we have worked hard to connect the latest in scholarly research with policy and public audiences nationwide. We've worked to train those experts as more effective communicators and to expand their networks here in Washington and beyond. Over time, they influence and advance the national conversation from their classrooms and communities to network television and Capitol Hill. We do this in full recognition and expectation that our scholars and alumni are our greatest resource. In just the last five years, Kennan Institute scholars have produced over 1,500 major media quotes or citations, over 400 op-eds, 
over 350 TV appearances, over 200 meetings and briefings on Capitol Hill and in the executive branch, and over 80,000 views per year for our Russiafile blog. Through our Kennan Conversation Program, Kennan experts have traveled to over 25 cities across the country to engage with local audiences and media on Russia and the region. I'm also happy to announce tonight that with renewed support from the Suzanne and Walter Scott Foundation and from Michael Yanni, we will be able to continue our Billington Fellowship awarded to rising scholars who carry forward James Billington's legacy through research on Russian history and culture. We've also just received word of a new recognition. Choice Magazine, which is published by the Association of College and Research Libraries, listed two Kennan Institute-supported books as outstanding academic titles for 2019. In the category of international relations, Ambassador William Hill's No Place for Russia, European Security Institutions Since 1989, and in the category of Slavic language and literature, the translation by Peter Constantine of Alexander Solzhenitsyn's memoir, Between Two Millstones, Book One, Sketches of Exile, 1974 to 1978. The translation was made possible through the Kennan Institute's Solzhenitsyn Initiative. Our other Solzhenitsyn translation project, The Red Wheel, received the Choice Magazine distinction in 2018. As I've said, at the end of the day, the Kennan Institute is really about people. So I'll conclude by acknowledging some of the key players in the Kennan Institute story here with us this evening. I've already mentioned the Kennan and Billington families and Fred Starr. Thank you all for joining us. And here with us tonight are two other past Kennan Institute directors, Peter Redaway and Blair Rubel. Peter played a special role in expanding access for scholars from across the Soviet Union to be in residence at Kennan, to their benefit and ours, and we continue to benefit from his vision in this regard. What can be said about Blair Rubel? Blair led the Institute from 1989. Maybe someone else has something to say about it. <laughs> Blair led Kennan from 1989 to 2012, some of the absolutely most consequential years in Russian history and for U.S.-Russia relations and his scholarly and personal integrity continue to serve as an example for all of us at the Kennan Institute. He really is an inspiration. Thank you both very much. Now I want to ask that my colleagues at the Kennan Institute please stand up. William Pomerantz, Isabella Tabarovsky, Joe Dressen, Victoria Pardini, Cindy, Gar Cindy Garcia, Morgan Jacobs, Gemily Safarilieva, and Nina Rojanovskaya. Please continue to stand. Uh, I want to ask those who are currently scholars or research interns at Kennan to stand as well. We're going we're gonna to do one of those look around the room things. If you're, if you currently or have ever served on a Kennan Institute advisory committee, that's the people who do the very difficult but essential work of selecting our scholars, please also stand. I know who you are, so you can't stay sitting. And finally, if you've ever been a staff member, a scholar, or an intern at Kennan, please stand. And again, I, I know who you are. There we go. Those, those standing in the room tonight are just a tiny fraction of the lives and careers shaped by an idea that was put forward in a conference room 45 years ago. We'll hear more about that in a moment. This collection of individuals inside and of course outside this room, some thanks to bad weather, have gone on to educate and influence how we in America think of Russia today. Thank you all so much. You've taken your seats already. Now. Clearly, there's more work to be done, but I would suggest to you that the Kennan Institute mission of improving American understanding of Russia, Ukraine, and the wider region is no less vital today than it was 45 years ago. What better way to illustrate the wisdom of that approach than tonight's tribute to the three Kennan Institute founders? 
Now, I'm not going to be able to give a full introduction for each of our speakers this evening because their biographies are in the program, and if I were to do justice to each of them, we would certainly be here until tomorrow.